another part of my series where I help YouTuber Melissa Lucy get an A this semester. Before we get started, make sure to download the free study plan using the link in the description. All right, let's get started. This is basically just telling us like, like it's telling us where the electrons are gonna be. Um, and it's also just a way to, to kind of represent like how to draw the electrons and understanding a rule called Hund's rule. Um, so you should have gone over Hund's rule. Essentially, it's just saying that electrons do not like to be in the same orbitals if they don't have to. So it's kind of like uh, if you could have more, actually th th think of it like um, if you're in an elevator, someone isn't just gonna, like it's an empty elevator and you're just in it. Someone isn't literally gonna stand right next to you. They're gonna stand at the opposite side of the elevator. And if they do, they're weird, get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's essentially what electrons are doing here. They don't like to be next to each other because they repel each other. Mm -hmm. So. That's essentially Hund's rule. Now, if we were to draw, uh, let's actually start off with just drawing the orbital diagram for nitrogen. I would start this off with actually writing out um, the electron configuration. They're either going to tell you to do the full electron configuration, which I have here for nitrogen, or the condensed one, which I wrote for everything else. Okay. And it's just kind of dependent on how, like, like how high up or how high, you know, down the element is, I'd say. So for nitrogen, um, I would just <clears throat> write in the electrons here. So this is 1s2. This 2 tells me there are two electrons there. So I'm going to, and actually, hold on. Let me explain this a little bit more. I would fill this completely because this is completely full. And then same thing here with 2s. So, okay, 1, 2. This is where it gets different, and this is where Hund's rule uh, applies. And I'm actually missing a box. Hold on. There we go, it's better. Okay, um, let me make this smaller. <laughs> That's gonna bug me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are three orbitals within the P subshell as we learned before. So there are three electrons here. So that means instead of this going one, two, three, that would be wrong, we actually fill each individual orbital first. So this is one, two, and three. That's Hund's rule. Okay. And then I'm going to do this again with, let's say, the next one. So I'll fill the 4s2, so that's just on its own because that tells us it's completely full. Uh, next, we have 3d6, and we have five different orbitals. So this is one, two, these are arrows, uh, three, four, and five, just telling you that there are five orbitals. Now there are six electrons within that. So this is how I'm going to fill it. I'm going to start here. So one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to come back around and I'm going to fill if I have to. So six. So it's kind of like saying, well, there's no other room to myself. Fine. I'll share an orbital. And that's kind of like what it's doing with, with Hun's rule. Okay. All right. Same thing goes for this one. Let's say for PR, this would have been, this is full, the three year, each individual one, and that's it. And then same thing goes for uh, Mercury. There's two here, 14 here. So how we would fill this would just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, come back around, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then this is completely full as well. So once again, just showing Hun's rule, this is one, two, three, four, five, come back around, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so that was just Hun's rule. The other little things that you're gonna have to know, uh, certain terms known as paramagnetic and diamagnetic. And this is just talking about the electrons. So looking at this first one, so I'd say looking at this top part, we would see that the electrons are not paired, right? They're unpaired electrons. So that would be para. This is paramagnetic. And I know it's kind of tricky with the name because you think, oh, pair. So like para, maybe that's a pair. That's not true. So it would actually be dia or di meaning two. That actually means paired electrons. So like this bottom part, since if we were to look at this bottom portion, everything is paired. So everything is paired. So that tells us that it's diamagnetic. So in order for it to be... Um 
like for n like the first two orbitals are so it but it, all of them have to be in order for the it to be considered no so it's really just the last one yeah it's really just the last one i would say here because everything kind of has to pair up um like everything before it is going to be paired up it's just the last one that's going to tell you so okay, I'd say just it. look at the last part. Yeah, that's Daya. If you're liking this series so far, give this video a like and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video.